Our next performance tool is something called value for money. Now when we're looking at value for money analysis, we need to think about the three E's. So, value for money. The first thing we look at is economy. The second is effectiveness. And the third is efficiency. What do each of these three E's mean? Well, economy means purchasing the inputs we need to our organization at the lowest possible cost that is consistent with the desired quality. So in very simple terms, if we think about the physical product we are producing, we want our material costs and our labor costs to be as low as possible without compromising on quality. So we'll note down our first def definition then. So purchasing inputs at the minimum cost consistent with our required quality. Okay, so that's our first E, economy. What about effectiveness? What does this mean? Well, effectiveness means doing the right thing. So does our output achieve its required objectives? So does our product do what it's supposed to do? Is it of the right quality? Does it have the functionality it is supposed to have? So effectiveness then is doing the right thing, meaning does our product meet the required objectives? So for example, if we manufacture and sell mobile phones, we need to look at our product, the mobile phone, and ensure it is, that it is effective. It has all the functionality that we expect and that we need the mobile phone to have. If it doesn't, then we're going to find it very difficult, perhaps, to sell on to our customers. But likewise, we don't want the mobile phone to have any unnecessary functionality that our customers don't require. If it has additional functionalities that our customers don't need or want, then it is just a waste of money. Finally, our third E is efficiency. This relates to or measures the level of output generated by a given input. So we want to maximize our outputs from a particular input. So for example, if we think about a manufacturing organization and our production line worker, we take one production line worker, we want to maximize the output from that one production line worker, who is our input or our resource into the production process. Now again, we want to maximize our output um, but without damaging staff motivation. So, we want to maximize the level of output from a number of given inputs. And they are our three E's that we look at in a value for money analysis. Let's have a look at an exercise. 
Now we can link our value for money analysis into the key performance indicators we thought about in a previous session. So we're asked in this exercise to suggest key performance indicators for economy, effectiveness and efficiency for a budget airline. So we want to think about then what kinds of things would we look at to see how economical a company's activities are. For economy, we are looking at minimising costs as much as possible while maintaining required quality standards. So first of all, let's think about um, what are the costs that might be incurred for a budget airline. We we'll perhaps have airport levies and charges. If we think about what's on the plane when you take a flight to go somewhere, you've got cabin crew. We also have, for a budget airline, there's going to be presumably an online booking system. So IT costs are going to be significant for a budget airline. Now I know there's plenty of other things um, we could put down here, but let's just focus on these three. So in terms of airport charges, how might we minimise that cost um, with, without compromising on quality? Have you flown with a budget airline recently? And you've booked a flight to a particular city? only to discover that the airport you're flying into is about 40 miles away from that actual city. And there's a bus that brings you into the city. So budget airlines may reduce their airport charges by flying to smaller airports that are actually quite far away from the stated destination. So we could look at, are we utilising smaller airports in order to minimise our airport charges? Generally, this won't affect product quality in terms of the customer experience because it still gets them to their required destination. What about cabin crew? Well, we could, of course, look at cabin crew salaries. and perhaps customer complaints. As a key performance indicator to see, are our cabin crew salaries low? Are we getting our staff in for as low a price as possible? But also, in relation to customer complaints, ensuring that the skill and experience of our cabin crew is satisfying our customers. In terms of IT, we can, of course, look at our IT expenditure and, if possible, perhaps compare it to a similar company and to see if perhaps our IT expenditure is excessive. Moving on then to efficiency. How might we measure efficiency? So efficiency KPIs. Remember, efficiency is looking at are we maximising our output from a given level of inputs? So if we think about then the inputs we have as a budget airline, so linked to the cost we incur, we mentioned cabin crew. So to look at efficiency, we could look at the number of cabin crew, so cabin crew numbers per passenger. On a given flight, do we have 10 cabin crew staff servicing 150 passengers? Or is there only two cabin crew staff servicing 150 passengers? If there's only two cabin crew staff servicing all those passengers, that would imply we're being extremely efficient with our inputs. Might also look at our flights per day. Again, in relation to cabin crew, we'll keep it simple. If we're paying cabin crew for a day's work, are we keeping them busy? 
are we getting that plane up and down as many times as possible in the course of the day? We mentioned that IT and online booking will be important to a budget airline. So a KPI for efficiency might be website availability. So given our IT expenditure, are we maximizing our output? Does our website work well? Are we getting as many bookings through our website as we possibly can? Is it available to customers to book flights 24 hours a day for every day of the year? Finally then, we'll look at effectiveness. So remember, effectiveness measures whether or, not a, whether or not our output is meeting the required objectives. So for a budget airline, what is the objective of our output? Well, we could ask the question, are we getting passengers? From A to B. So are we getting passengers from A to B within the required standard of service? Just correcting my spelling there. So are we getting passengers from A to B effectively? Again, we could look at the website. Is our website processing bookings Correctly. So when someone books a flight on our website, does that flight get booked? Is that booking made properly? Or do bookings tend to fall through the cracks and disappear from our booking systems? Are payments being processed properly via our website? So these are a number of different suggestions. Again, you may have others and that's fine.